my womb leap for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May our souls magnify the Lord as well. Christmas music is everywhere. Perhaps you have heard a fairly recent Christmas arrangement called Mary, Did You Know? A stirring a cappella piece by Pentatonix that wonders if Mary had any idea how great a gift she was giving the world in the birth of the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. One line asks, Mary, did you know that when you kiss your baby boy, you are kissing the face of God? These verses, Mary, did you know, were written down some 2,000 years after that simple yet spectacular birth in Bethlehem. A story recorded in Luke's Gospel and a story foretold by prophets like Isaiah who had a vision of a suffering servant who would become a Messiah for all of God's people. Even little Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ, was mentioned in our Old Testament reading from Micah on this fourth Sunday in Advent. What did Micah know? Micah, like all the Old Testament prophets, knew that he was called by Almighty God to be a messenger, often a messenger of harsh judgment and dire warnings. God's people had wandered far from the call to love God and to love neighbor, to the call to care for the widow and the sojourners, to keep the Ten Commandments. God spoke through the prophets. God had Micah share the vision of a ruler coming out of not royal Jerusalem, but coming out of little old Bethlehem. This was some 700 years before Luke's gospel would put Bethlehem on the map for the followers of Jesus Christ. Are we Christians reading too much into this vision of the prophet Micah? I believe God used Micah at a particular time when the Assyrians were conquering the northern kingdom of Israel and were threatening Jerusalem and her neighbors like little Bethlehem. And God continued to use Micah's message centuries later when the birth of Jesus would forever have us Christians singing about a little town of Bethlehem. And I believe God is using Micah still today to challenge us to remember that God can bring something powerful out of something insignificant. God can use Bethlehem for the birthplace of a king like Micah foretold. And God can use Mary to give human life to a baby that would grow to become our Lord and Savior. Mary's hymn shared at the end of today's gospel lesson is called the Magnificat because it begins, my soul magnifies the Lord. It celebrates God's ability to create something out of nothing. That's God.
God's gift from the beginning. God's creation story continues in Bethlehem. God's creation story continues today. What did Micah know? What do we know? We know God's love for all of creation. God's amazing ability to bring the unexpected out of the unexpected. A ruler for all people out of Bethlehem. A Messiah from the baby born to Mary so long ago. A Savior for us all in 2018, soon to be 2019. The story continues. Thank God for the prophet Michael. Thank God for the willingness of Mary. Thank God that we are part of the story and God is ready to use us today. How can you share the good news of Jesus Christ? Who can you share this good news with? How can you communicate the love that has the power to conquer all the evil we hear about every day? Don't think you are too small or too old or not eloquent enough. It's not about you. It's about Almighty God who can do everything for everybody. God's story continues. And we are invited to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are encouraged to join the line of the faithful, to join Micah, to join Mary, to be open to God's direction and God's encouragement today. Use us, O oh Lord. Use even us to help our world prepare for Christ's promised return. Use us. Use us even us. And may we give the glory to God, the God who knows our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Amen. Having heard God's Word read and proclaimed, we respond as people of faith by declaring what we believe. Today I invite you to stand with me and using the words of the Apostles' Creed to once again share our faith. Let us confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Proceed. Our worship continues with the prayers of the people. Before I lead us in a pastoral prayer, I invite us all to take a few moments in silent personal prayer time to thank God for bringing us together on this particular Sunday morning, to ask for God's guidance as we venture into this week of Christmas, to look to God for help with all that we need to help in accomplishing. Following that time of silent prayer, I will lead us in a pastoral prayer and then invite you to join your voice with mine as together we say our Lord's Prayer. So let us all pray to our loving God first in silence. Creating God, created us clean hearts and willing spirits. 
As we draw near to the celebration of Christmas, we thank you, loving God, for guiding us through this Advent season. Help us, O oh God, to prepare to receive the Christ child in you and to find fresh ways to share the love of Jesus with our hurting world. We pray for those in Indonesia who have experienced another tsunami. And we pray for our government employees impacted by the lack of cooperation between our president and the Congress. Help us, O oh God, to be better neighbors, more willing servants, compassionate friends during this wondrous season. God of all nations, we wonder if peace is possible anywhere. We pray for Syria and for Afghanistan as our troops who have worked so hard to keep the peace are being called home. May the evil of ISIS and the Taliban be removed from the face of the earth. Bring peace, O oh God, between the Kurds and the Turkish neighbors, between the Koreans, between the Palestinians and the Israelis, in Yemen and in South Sudan, between the refugees and the border patrol. May the Prince of Peace fill our hearts to overflowing and hear our prayers. Healing God, we pray for those in hospitals and in nursing homes here at Christmas. We pray for those in prison and for the victims of their crimes. We pray for those battling cancer and for those who have no insurance. Keep us praying until all are well and all have sufficient food and sufficient hope for tomorrow. Inspiring God, we thank you for the gifts of our choirs and our musicians. Be with us all on Christmas Eve as we sing the beloved carols and feast together at this communion table. Continue, O oh God, to teach our Sunday school teachers and our Bible study leaders as they teach us. Give us the loving present of your presence in this wondrous season. We pray traveling mercies for those driving and flying to family destinations. And we pray your amazing grace on all those we name in our hearts. Hear us now, Heavenly Father as we continue our Advent journey by sharing the prayer Jesus taught to his first disciples. Make us more willing and more faithful disciples today as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of dedication this morning is hymn number 129, Lo, our Rose Airborne.
continues. So I urge you as you follow the light of Christ back out into the world to know that you are going to a place that needs to hear some good news, that needs to hear of the love of God. You are ambassadors for Christ. So follow this light. Be about the good news of sharing with others a message they may never hear unless they hear it from you. So go forth, my friends. By grace, join us again tomorrow night for our Christmas Eve service. Through love, enjoy this glorious Christmas season and share, continue to share that grace that abounds. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to rise upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. The peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh.